If you want to learn how to upload images to your Superbase storage bucket from your Flutter app, then you come to the right place. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can set up Superbase storage and upload images from your Flutter app. This video continues building on top of a previously built user management app, so if you haven't checked that one out yet, the link is in the description. If you want to follow along, you can click the bonus profile photo section. Now we previously built three pages, account page, login page, and splash page, but we're mainly going to focus on the account page today, and specifically there's going to be a new widget up there um, to upload a new avatar for the user. So we are going to actually create a new widget, and we're just going to place it inside a components folder, and we're going to call it avatar.dart. Now we are going to start out by creating a standard service widget, name it avatar. And let's actually start up by creating a size box. Uh, we want this widget to be a 150 by 150 box, so we're just going to do that. Now it's going to have a child of container, and inside that container we're just going to have a text that says no image. Now this avatar widget is going to be placed inside the account page and it will receive some parameters from the account page. So let's set up those parameters. The first one is a image URL and the second one is on upload method. Image URL will contain the URL of the image if it exists and on upload is a callback function that will call within this widget when we upload an image. Now we're going to use the ternary operator to conditionally display this no image widget. And when we actually do have an image URL, we'll just display a network image. We can also set the fit on the network image to make it look nicer. And then let's wrap this entire thing in a column so that we can have a button just placed right below it. So we're going to add the size box for some padding and then elevate it button. Now we are going to write the entire upload logic inside this on pressed. Now in order to select images from the phone, we are going to use the external library and we are going to use the image picker for that. So let's add that in our pubspec.yaml file and run pubget. Now there are also some additional configuration that we need to go through such as adding these in the info.plist file. I'm going to skip through this step, but your info.plist should look something like this. And we're back to our Flutter app. Now let me restart the debug session and while we do that, let's start writing some code. So let's look at some sample code. I think we can copy and paste this part. We can auto import the necessary packages. And we're going to start up by converting the selected image into bytes array because that'll be the format that's used in the supervised method that we're going to use today. In case the user didn't select an image, I'm just going to return the function. Now we can start calling some superbase methods. So away superbase.storage.from and we have to specify the bucket name, but we haven't created any bucket yet. So let's take care of that first. Just a quick overview of what we did before though. Inside our superbase dashboard, we created a table named profiles. We created this table by copying and pasting some SQL snippets from the user management guide. When we did that, there were some snippets at the bottom that I omitted because it, I said it was storage related. It's probably time to go back to those snippets, so let's find them at the top of this guide. We can find the SQL snippets. And at the very bottom of these snippets are the storage related snippets. Well, let's take a deeper look at what these snippets are doing. The top one is inserting a row into the buckets table. This is creating a bucket in Superbase storage. And the three statements following the insert statement is just creating row level security policy to allow select, insert, and update 
uh, for the created bucket. Instead of just copy and pasting these snippets, why don't we actually use the GUI to create the bucket and create the policies as well. We're going to go back to the Superbase dashboard, go to the storage menu and create a bucket named profiles. And we are going to make this profiles bucket public because we want our profile images to be publicly available to everybody. Everything looks good. Let's hit save. And a bucket is created. Now even for public buckets, by default, all uploads are denied. So let's set some role-level security policy to allow uploads. Let's create a policy from scratch, give it a name. We are going to make an insert policy. For target roles, we want to target authenticated because we want our users to be logged in when they upload files. And the policy definition, we are going to compare the text representation of the author UID with the first element in the path of our uploaded files. So this means that every single authenticated users will have their own folder inside this profiles bucket and that folder name has to match their user ID. Let's also create some additional policies. We're going to give it a name. For the allowed operations, we're going to check update and we're also going to check select because otherwise we wouldn't be able to update the previously uploaded file. Now for the target roles, we're going to select authenticated and we're going to have the same policy right there. Notice that I'm using a supervised defined function called storage.foldername. This is a convenient function to get path names separated into arrays of texts. Now we should be ready to go back to our app and complete the code. So superstars.from and profiles and then we want to specify the path that we want to upload the files to. So call upload binary and then for path, it's going to be the user ID slash something. And let's get the user ID up here. We're just going to call superbase.auth, that current user. And we're just going to say we know that user signed in, so it's never null, and dot ID. Properly update the path in the upload binary method. And we're just going to say we are going to upload it under slash profile. And data is just going to be image bytes that we got up there. And that's actually all we need to upload an image. Now, once an upload is complete, we have to call the unupload callback with the image URL. So we have to get the image URL somehow. And for that, we can use get public URL. We're going to need the image path multiple times. So I'm just going to extract it as a single variable up here. And we can call get public URL to get our image URL. Once we have the image URL, we can just pass that to the own upload callback and I think it looks good. I just forgot to give a gray background to this container. So I'm just going to do that right now. And I think we are ready to check how this widget works. Let's actually go back to the account page, place this avatar widget, and set up some necessary variables to get it going. Let's add a size box for padding and the avatar widget. Now let's just skip the image URL variable, but we can create the on upload callback. It's going to take an image URL. And for now, we're going to have an empty method. Now for image URL, we can just create a new variable up here. We can just take this variable and pass it to the avatar widget. And on the on upload callback, we can just set state and set the underscore image URL to the image URL. I think it's time to test out the avatar widget. We can click the upload button, allow access to photo library, and I'm just going to select one of the default images at the bottom. And it looks like image upload is working fine. We can confirm by heading to the Superbase dashboard, hit reload, and we see the image right there. 
It seems like though the mine type didn't go through, so let's fix this. Let's go back to our flutter code, and we're gonna utilize the file options to set the mine type of the image file. So let's set the file options. And file options contains three properties. The one that we're interested in is the content type and upset. Let's actually set upset to true first. This allows us to upload the image or update the image if there's already a image at the same path. We want our users to be able to update their image, so we'll set it to true. And for the content type, we're just gonna hard code it with image slash, and then we're just gonna get the extension of the image. This is a quick and dirty way. There are actually more proper way of getting the mind type, but we just wanna get something uh, quick and dirty here. So I'm just gonna take the image extension by creating image text extension variable and get the uh, first element after the dot pretty much. And also make it lowercase. Now that we have the image extension, we can just add that right here and set the proper mind type. And this error is coming because the file option is set to con. So I can just remove that. And I think we are set. Let's try it out again. We're just gonna hit refresh just in case. Click the upload button. And I'm just gonna choose the leaf image at the bottom here. And the upload is complete except where did the leaf go? Let's check out Super Restores and what we have. And it seems like we do have the leaf image in the storage, but we are not seeing that on the client side. Alright, it's gotta be the cache. Cache is great because it saves the user from extra bandwidth, but in this case we want to update the image as soon as the user uploads a new image. We are going to dynamically change the image URL by appending a random timestamp uh, query parameters onto the image URL. We're gonna use the url.parse constructor and use the replace to dynamically change the query parameters with a key of t and then value is gonna be the current timestamp in milliseconds. The t doesn't have to be um, t necessary, it doesn't really have any meaning, it can be anything. And then we're just gonna uh, convert that into string and reassign it to the image URL again. Now that we have a dynamic URL, let's test it out. Let me upload this image and yep, it is working just fine. Finally, let's fix the problem where the avatar URL is not persisted on the user's database. So upon on upload, we are going to update the user's profile. And the profile actually has a column called avatar URL. So we're just going to pass the image URL as the avatar URL. And now the user profile image is persisted on the user's database. Make sure to set the EQ filter to target only this user's profile when we update the profile information. And we also can get this avatar URL when we initially load the data from database. So we're just gonna add one row here saying image URL equals data of key of avatar URL. And just like that, our user image is persisted. So let's try to re-upload a image one last time. I'm just gonna hit this one. And as we refresh the app, the image is persisted. And we can confirm that in our storage, the profile image upon refreshing is the proper one. And that is how you can upload images from your Flutter app. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later with more Flutter and Superbase content.